Welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. So we are going to look at a basic sine graph, so y equals sine alpha. Now, and we'll be going through looking, understanding it, and reading off the, um, the graph that we are going to create to see what angles are bigger. Now the first thing before I create the graph that, we, that we'll be reading is really understanding sine. So if we're thinking about sine, sine, sine is the opposite. So the opposite side, which is we look at, say, is the um, y-axis. So sine is the same as me looking at y. So we're going to go around this, the, the circle and we're going to break it down into zero degrees. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. If I'm using radius, I could also write it as 360 degrees is 2 pi, 180 degrees is pi, 90 degrees is Pi divided by 2, 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2. So that's another way we could write it. Because when we are going to be graphing, we are going to be breaking it down into those segments. So I've got 0 here, then I have 90 degrees, 180 degrees. 270 degrees and 360 degrees because we, we, we haven't changed the period um, in here so our circle uh, takes 360 degrees to go around. The next thing I want you to think about is the amplitude so how big our circle is going to be. That is normally a uh, letter A here before our sign. If, if that number changes, then our amplitude changes. But right now, there's nothing there, so it's just one sign. So that just means on our graph, we've got one and we've got negative one. Because our, um, our circle that we are doing has a radius of one unit. So now we know that, we are going to be thinking about it based on sine alpha equals y. So at zero, um, we know that um, sine alpha is, well, zero. When our graph gets to 90 degrees, our y is going to be at 1, because it's a radius of 1. So I know that sine here will equal one. Then when we get down here, see how it's going back down, the y-axis is going back down? So y all has to be zero. So at sine alpha, when alpha is 180 degrees, we know that it's going to equal zero. Exactly the same here. At, 200, at, 200, um, at 270 degrees, well, we are negative one, aren't we? So our graph for sine alpha or sine 270 degrees is going to be negative 1. So we can draw that on here. We are at degree 0, we're 0. As soon as we get to 90 degrees, our sine is 1. As soon as we get to 180 degrees, our sine is back to 0. So on the x-axis, and then at 270 degrees, we get to negative 1. At 360 degrees, our y-axis is at 0. So we are back at 0. So now I can draw my graph. I might change colour so it's easier for you to see. So I'm going up. Then I'm going back down. 
and there is our uh, basic sine graph. <clears throat> now, if I would like to tell what um, what angle is bigger or smaller, I can think about this. If I have sine 20 degrees and sine 120 degrees. Well, sine 20 degrees would be here. So I know this is 0 0.5, so it's less than 0 0.5. I would say about 0 0.4. I can double check on my calculator. But if I've got sine 120 degrees, I know 90 is here. It's a bit higher than half away between um, 90 and 180, so it's, so it's about here. So if I go across, it's higher. So I know that sine 120 degrees is greater, um, that is greater than sine 20 degrees. So this is where we are able to compare. Now, if we get our calculators, we can co confirm that. So if I type in sine 20 degrees, it equals 0 0.34. And I did say it's less than 0 0.5. If I type in sine 120 degrees, it is 0 0.5. Eight, six, and I did put my dash around here. So I knew it was greater than 0 0.5. So you, we are able to work out um, approximately what each of our angles is worth based on graphing our information and we can see what is bigger and what is smaller. I really hope that helps you understand how to graph a graph a uh, a sine graph just remember the reason why we started at zero is because sine alpha equals equals our y-axis because sine is opposite over hypotenuse really hope that helps you understand it if you need any extra help feel free to message me and get back to me